Hi, um, welcome to the Aquatic Ecology Lab at Oak Ridge National Lab. My name is Terry Matthews, and I lead a group called Biodiversity and Ecosystem Health in the Environmental Sciences Division here. We're a diverse group of scientists with different expertise and skills, but we all focus on understanding the impacts of different energy strategies on the environment. And because we know that energy and water are so strongly linked, it takes energy to deliver and produce clean water for us to drink, and it also takes water to produce energy at oftentimes. A lot of us focus on the impacts of energy on aquatic ecosystems. We're particularly focused on biodiversity, understanding the impacts of energy on biodiversity. Biodiversity is really just a term to describe the wide variety of life on Earth. Biodiversity is important. It's considered to be an indication of ecosystem health. We rely on biodiversity for things like clean drinking water, or nutritious food, or even for disease control. So understanding how biodiversity changes um, with different uh, energy strategies is really important. There are a lot of ways to study biodiversity. So we use a lot of tools in my group um, from the molecular level all the way to the ecosystem level. Sometimes we need to, to study the environment and we need to know how many of a species are present, or we might need to know the health of the organisms that are present. And in that case, we will sample using traditional methods. So things that we've all seen. So fishing using fishing rod or nets. We sometimes use a technique called electrofishing, which just releases electricity into the water to stun fish temporarily. This just makes it easy for us to, to net the fish up and catch them so that we can measure them and look at which species and count which species are present. In addition, sometimes we want to look at things on a broader scale. For example, we might want to look at a forested area over time or to look at submerged aquatic vegetation in a stream. We can use things like drones, either drones or satellites, to look at an entire watershed over time to look at vegetation. My background is actually in oceanography and I study how chemicals behave in the environment and how chemicals can affect which species can live in an environment over time. And these chemicals can be things like nutrients, like nitrate or phosphate, the things that you fertilize your plants with, but they can also be contaminants like mercury. And I'm particularly fascinated not only in how chemicals can control which species can live in a given ecosystem, but how the biodiversity or the species that live in an ecosystem can actually impact which chemicals and how the chemicals behave in, in the ecosystem. Mercury is one of the only metals that's known to biomagnify. And this just means that it becomes more and more concentrated as it moves up the food chain to fish. So our biggest dose of mercury comes from eating contaminated fish. The longer a fish lives, the more steps in the food chain there are, the higher the concentration of mercury in that fish. So, even though you might have a healthy ecosystem, a healthy ecosystem, which is a diverse ecosystem, that means that you have more steps in the food chain. So in a healthy ecosystem, you could actually have fish that have high concentrations of mercury, which might not have been obvious if you just thought about it. I lead a long-term biological monitoring program, and we are sampling for biodiversity and water quality at the same sites over time. So at the same sites, we have entomologists that are collecting invertebrate samples to look at which species are there and how many are there. And we're particularly focused on looking for sensitive species, species that are sensitive to water quality, because we know that if they're there, then that water quality is good. We have ichthyologists that are doing the same thing, collecting fish samples to look at which species are there and are there sensitive species there. And then we are collecting water samples to look at the water quality. So to look at contaminant concentrations, nutrient concentrations, and we take some of the samples back and we have toxicologists that actually look at how that water affects the survival and reproduction of both aquatic invertebrates and fish. What we found is that the water quality at, at the, our monitored sites has improved significantly over the 35 years that we've been monitoring. Not only the, has the water quality improved, but the biodiversity has improved significantly. So this is really great news. We're also developing technologies and strategies to improve the water quality. For example, we're working with material scientists and geochemists to develop things called sorbents that can absorb mercury and other contaminants from contaminated waters. And we do this in what's called artificial mesocosms or artificial streams, where we actually bring in natural stream water from contaminated streams and then test out technologies in a flowing system. Because contaminants like mercury actually behave very differently in flowing water than in still water. 
So we're developing things like sorbents that can remove mercury so it cannot biomagnify. It's not available for uptake by fish. And one of the other things that we're doing is we are looking at the possibility of using native species of freshwater mussels. Mussels are really interesting animals. They are filter feeders, which means that they feed by pumping water over their gills to remove plankton and other particles for food. And these species are among the the species across the world that are most in danger of extinction, because they feed by filtering a lot of water, they're extremely sensitive to water quality. So we're working with Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency to actually seed our local streams with mussels. These mussels are considered ecosystem engineers, which means that because they are filtering water, they're actually uh, improving water quality over time and they can significantly alter the ecosystem. So we're hoping that not only can we use the mussels potentially as a natural filter to remove mercury from the water column so it's not available for uptake by fish, but also we're restoring the ecosystem back to the way it was before there were impacts on the ecosystem.